this video will show you how to adjust your network settings without any third-party apps for the lowest ping and the least input delay possible. Make sure to follow each step and check out our performance boosting tool for awesome tweaks as well. Now let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm always doing in my videos is creating a new system restore point. So if you run into any issues after applying these settings, you can restore everything with a single click so you don't mess up anything in your system. I highly recommend this to anybody. Go into your Windows search bar, search for advanced system settings and go to the system properties tab, system protection. You can go ahead, click on the create button if it's grayed out for you and click on configure. Turn on the system protection, set this to around 10%, apply these changes and then you should see the create button. You can call this whatever you want but I'm gonna go with frost life best ping, create. Once it got created successfully, we can close this and continue by going to the network tab. Now we're gonna start with optimizing your PC, your network settings to get less input delay and a better ping so make sure to follow each step. So click on view network connections and then here you're gonna see your ethernet cable if you're using wi-fi. First of all I recommend everybody to use ethernet obviously. Either way if you get ethernet or wi-fi double click on it, go to properties. We want to make sure that everything is unticked except the QoS packet scheduler and the TCP IPv4. All these other things aren't really necessary. Continue by pressing on configure and go to power management. Here you want to make sure that the computer never turns off this device to save power. Untick this and continue in the advanced tab and in here you're going to copy all of my settings. I'm going to go through all of these. It actually varies from system to system so you might see other settings from which I've got but just make sure that if I mention the property which you got, copy the exact value I'm showing you. We're going to start with advanced energy efficient ethernet or in short EEE and you want to make sure that this is disabled to avoid added latency from power saving features. ARP offload should actually be disabled instead of enabled since this prevents the adapter from handling ARP requests during sleep which can slightly improve performance consistency. The triple E max support speed should set to the highest possible for you. For me it's 2.5 full duplex and this sets the maximum support speed for the adapter to the highest available for lowest latency and best throughput. Energy efficient Ethernet should obviously disabled since this reduces power saving behavior that can introduce latency. The flow control should be disabled. This prevents pause frames and tasks like aiming. Gigabit light should also be disabled. Green Ethernet disabled. Interrupt moderation disabled. This reduces input latency by processing packets immediately instead of batching. IPv4 checksum offload should also be disabled to reduce CPU offload delays by letting the CPU handle checksum calculations directly. Jumbo frame disabled. This ensures compatibility and avoids latency issues caused by large packet sizes in gaming. Large send offload v2 disabled to prevent delays from offloading packet segmentations to the adapter. Large send offload 2 disabled to prevent delays from offloading packet segmentation to the adapter. So IPv4 and IPv6 should both be disabled. Network address not present. NS offload should be disabled to stop the adapter from handling neighbor discovery for IPv6 which avoids latency in certain scenarios. Power saving mode also of course disabled. Priority and VLAN should be disabled to prevent possible overheat from VLAN tagging and QoS handling which aren't needed for gaming. Receive buffers should be set to your maximum. To check your maximum value you can just enter some random number and it's going to tell you the valid range is from 32. So in my case it's 4096. The segment coalescing for IPv4 and 6 should both be disabled. This reduces the latency by delivering packets immediately. Shutdown wake on LAN disabled. Speed and duplex ensures the highest consistent speed and lowest latency for the adapter. So set this to the highest possible in my case 2.5. The TCP checksum offload for IPv4 and 6 should both be disabled which avoids offload delay and increases performance for latency sensitive apps. Transmit buffers once again should be the highest value possible. So we enter something, click somewhere and it's going to tell us 4096 once again is our highest. UDP checksum offload for IPv4 and 6 should once again be disabled. This reduces latency in fast paced UDP heavy applications like Fortnite or gaming. VLAN ID can just left be blank. Wake on magic package disabled. This prevents unnecessary background checks. Wake on pattern match also disabled. And the shutdown link speed should be set to not speed down which prevents the adapter from lowering link speed during shutdown or wake on land mode ensuring it stays ready at full speed without delays. If you got any property in here which I haven't went over because I simply don't got it for my adapter make sure to comment it down below and I will tell you which value to put there. And that's it. We can go ahead, press OK, close. It would disconnect and connect again after applying all these changes. So with this, you successfully adapted your network for the best internet settings to have the lowest input delay and ping within your network. Make sure to comment down below what your ping was before and after this video. If you got any other questions related to this topic, make sure to drop them down below as well. And otherwise, I wish everybody a great day and I'm gonna see you in the next one.